Hello girls and squirrels, happy Wednesday and welcome back to my channel. You guys know what time it is. Spring is in the air, finally. I'm so excited. This is the first sunny day we've had in the past couple days. We had a winter front come through. It's still kind of cold outside, but at least the sun is out and I am just living for it. It has been a dark, hard, depressing winter and I am ready for the sunshine. I never thought I would say or be the type of person to be like, yes, summer, spring is here, but I am that person this year. So I'm very excited for warmer weather. Also, I got a new haircut. I got a mullet because if you don't have a mullet at least once in your life, did you really live, you know? So the mullet's back and I'm gonna run with it while I can, while it's still in fashion. Speaking of fashion, today's video is all about our spring and summer 2022 fashion trends. As always, I will be going in sections, starting with decades, going to colors, prints, overall trends, etc., etc. I will leave time stamps down below. If you guys want to skip ahead, you don't want to see a certain section, you can always skip to those times. Alrighty, so everyone grab a drink, grab a snack, and something to take Take notes with because we got a lot to cover. All right, so let's get started with the decades that are on trend. So the number one trend for the past about a year, year and a half has been early 2000s. And this trend is not going anywhere. If anything, it's amping up. Definitely keep an eye out for those Y2K early 2000s pieces. They are selling like hotcakes on Depop especially, uh, but I am seeing them sell a lot on other platforms as well. But if you are focusing a lot on Y2K, and early 2000s style, Depop is definitely a good platform for that. Of course, that leads us to 90s. We are still seeing a ton of 90s pieces and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And of course, with fashion taking a 20 year cycle, 90s fashion was influenced a lot by 70s fashion. So of course, 70s fashion is also on trend. With the 70s, I'm seeing a lot of Western wear especially. And last but not least on our decades list, I wanted to shout out the 80s once again. 80s had a huge uprising a few years ago and we saw it kind of trickle out, but this year we aren't really seeing the style of 80s as much. We are seeing obviously the puff sleeves, the big shoulders, those aren't going anywhere anytime soon. But what's really Really on trend is 80s colors. We're seeing a ton of just bright neon bold colors. So definitely keep an eye out for those 80s colors. I've got a good example right here. This is an 80s blouse. I love this blouse. It's got all these crazy color polka dots on it. So fun, we love it. All right, so speaking of color, let's get to the color trends. I'm gonna be putting up the Pantone Spring and Summer 2022 chart, <laughs> that's a mouthful, on the screen right here if you wanna take a screenshot of it just to have for reference. But I'm gonna go through a list of some of the most popular colors for Spring and Summer 2022. These colors I do wanna mention are in no particular order. These are just the most popular color trends. First up, we have highlighter yellow. Like I said, 80s coming back, get those neons out. Then we have power blues. So a blue like I have on right now, just blues that are very rich in tone, but are also very vibrant and bright. Then we have purple, purple in all hues, any type of purple, pastel purple, bright purple, kind of muted purple, 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 purple. <laughs> And then of course we have pastels. Pastels are making a huge comeback right now. And speaking of pastels, we have a lot of pastel mixing. It's just like color blocking or color mixing, but it's on the pastel spectrum of color. Then of course we have monochromatic. A lot of people are doing these bold, beautiful outfits, these all orange, all blue, all green outfits, and I am just living for it. I love the boldness of it. I love a good monochrome outfit. It really just inspires you to maybe wear some pieces that you wouldn't normally wear together, but you're wearing them together because they go well in color together, and it just adds a lot of texture and 
interest to the outfit when it's all one color. You end up having all these different styles of pieces and different textures of pieces, but it's all the same color, so it, it just works. It's so good. I love it. And last but certainly not least on our color trends, we have green. Green took over in fall and winter, and she is here to stay. All shades of green, especially Kelly green, lime green, pastel green. I'm so excited for this trend because green is one of my favorite colors, and I'm so excited that lime green is back. Honestly, I loved hot pink and lime green when I was a kid in the early 2000s, and I'm, I'm living for it now, obviously. <laughs> All right, so moving on to prints. Again, these are in no particular order. First, we have gingham. Gingham print has been literally everywhere and it, it's been on everything. It's been on bags, shoes, accessories, shirts, bottoms, all of it all gingham and I am here for it. Gingham is one of my favorite prints, especially for spring and summer. I kind of love that it made a revival in fall and winter because it's a bit unexpected in fall and winter, but Obviously, I'm loving it in spring and summer. It's just one of those classic prints that you can't go wrong with. Next on the list, we have large floral prints. And these are primarily seen on dresses, but I've also seen them on jackets and pants and skirts. So look out for the giant floral. Speaking of florals, next on the list is red florals specifically. We haven't seen this in a while and you know what? I'm pretty excited about it because it's a little way to spice up the floral trend. You know, florals typically come in like earth tones or pinks or, you know, pastels or purples or whatever, but red is a bit unexpected, especially for spring and summer. For me, red is just more fall and winter or it has been. Red is not normally a color that I gravitate towards but I'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for this one next on the list we have polka dots polka dots were a huge trend a few years ago and they died off there for a couple years and now they are back which I mean hello I, th I just love a good polka dot it's so retro it's so classic but it can also be made fun and funky with color. So I'm, I'm definitely here for this trend. Definitely start picking up the polka dots again. So our next trend is a little bit unexpected for spring and summer, and that is plaid. Plaid is primarily a fall and winter print, but it is staying in spring and summer. We're seeing a lot of brightly colored plaids, and I think this has a lot to do with the early 2000s trend coming back. If you guys grew up in the early 2000s, you know we all had those Bermuda shorts that were the bright Easter egg color plaids. Yep. <laughs> But we're doing it in a little more fashion forward way with jackets. We are doing it with pants. So definitely keep an eye out for bottoms that are plaid or shorts that are plaid, but maybe in a more spring palette. Next on the list, we have bold stripes. Now what I mean by bold stripes is really thick stripes. We're talking horizontal or vertical. Think Beetlejuice, bold bold people. We're not talking skinny classic stripes. We're talking bold. I've seen a lot of shirts that are like um, vertical striped and then have horizontal striped sleeves. I've seen shirts where they're one color stripe on the on the top and one color stripe on the sleeve. Mixing it up, we're getting a lot more creative with stripes this season. Next up, we have an animal print, more specifically tiger print. Tiger print is going to be huge. Tiger print was very big in the early 2000s, so I think that's why it's such a huge trend now. Tiger print has kind of been on the uprise for the last couple years, but now we're kind of seeing it explode. So if you're gonna pick up some animal print this spring and summer, definitely make it tiger print. And last but not least on our patterns list, we have pattern mixing. Now this is just like color blocking. It's where you wear multiple different patterns in an outfit. It gives the outfit some interest. I encourage you guys to play around with patterns. I was always the type of person who was scared to mix patterns and now 
that's all I want to do is mix patterns. It just gives such a visual interest to an outfit. It like puts you out of your comfort zone, gets you out of your box, and you'll be surprised what amazing outfits you can create with pieces you never thought you would wear together. All right, so let's move on to our overall trends list. Again, this is in no particular order. Let's get to it because there are a ton, a ton of them. <laughs> All right, first up, we have the return of mini. I'm talking mini micro skirts, mini dresses, mini tops, mini bags, all of it, mini. And obviously, where does this come from? Let me hear it. That's right, the early 2000s, where micro and mini were all of the rage. Of course, when it comes to mini, we have the classic mini skirt. The mini skirt really took off in the 60s and 70s, and then made a comeback in the 90s and the early 2000s. And then of course, in the early 2000s, we had to make it smaller, and thus was born the micro mini skirt. We're talking th this much fabric, people. This much. Enough to cover, not even enough to cover but it's in, it's here. So, and I've seen a ton of them in the thrift stores, so definitely keep an eye out for them. They are on trend. So going back to more of a classic, we have the mini skirt suit sets. I love mini skirt suit sets. They're sexy, they're chic, they're badass. I just, I love it. I love it so much. I love it maybe even more than a power pants suit. I love a mini skirt suit set. We're talking share from Clueless. I love to see these types of sets casual down, maybe with a sneaker. Love a sneaker with these. I also love a combat boot, more grungy pieces added to it. There are so many ways to wear a mini skirt, a mini skirt suit set. That is a tongue twister. I <laughs> will not be saying it anymore because I've messed it up five times at least. Pick them up. They're so versatile. Even if you don't feel like wearing the whole set together, now you've got two pieces. You've got a skirt and a jacket. So the possibilities are endless. And last on our list for mini, we have mini dresses. We will get to mini bags, but that will be in our bags trend. Uh, mini dresses, self-explanatory. Also those super short baby doll dresses. Keep an eye out for those. Speaking of mini, we have the maximum midriff trend. Now with everything being so tiny, obviously we're gonna be showing a ton of skin. So that leads me to micro crop tops. Now, I'm not talking just your regular crop top where it like comes to about like here, about your waist. I'm talking like right up to the boob, showing a little bit of under boob. We're even seeing where it's being cropped up above those super micro crops. I'm actually working on a shirt right now that I'm gonna be styling. So keep an eye out on my Instagram to see how that look comes together. So I just took one of Cody's old button downs. This is so easy to DIY. I will be putting up a small tutorial, maybe on TikTok. I haven't decided if I wanna do like a YouTube short and upload it here. Let me know if you guys wanna see a tutorial on how I did this. I'll just wear it like this and wear a bralette underneath. Um, with some high-waisted jeans or shorts. Haven't completely decided yet, but this is what I'm talking about. Micro, micro crop tops. And like I said, these are very easy to DIY. So if you have some damaged button downs or some button downs that you're getting rid of, some sweatshirts that you're getting rid of, maybe think about hyper cropping them and selling them that way. Gives it a more on trend look. That leads me to wearing bras as tops. This was a huge trend probably about five years ago and now it is making a comeback. I'm not talking about like cupped bras, like a, just a regular bra. I'm talking more like fancy bras, more in like the bralette style, the cage bra style, those types of bras. A lot of people are looking for to put underneath super sheer tops, see-through tops, macrame tops, and even under those micro crop tops that are cropped up to here. Then we have the strappy tops. What I mean by this is where it's got that long strap that you kind of like tie ballerina style around your waist. So like the ballerina flat tie shoes that you tie all the way up your leg, but for your midriff. <laughs> They were super big in the early 2000s and they're definitely making a comeback now. We're also seeing a lot of um, small thin spaghetti strap details on the back and also the front. 
like a crisscross kind of situation, cage bras, things like that. But those tie around the waist tops are very, very in right now. And that leads me to cutouts, cutouts on everything, dresses, pants there's like cutouts on the waist there's cutouts on the sleeves i've seen a lot of it on jeans as well i love this one actually where it's like a checker print cutout love that all right so next on the list we have scarf tops and this is where you take a big scarf like this usually they're silk or they're like a silky material and you tie it in a way that makes a top and there are so many different ways that you can tie these large scarves like this i'm actually kind of excited for this trend this trend started trickling in a couple years ago but it is now in full bloom no pun intended but also pun intended um and i can't wait i found this scarf at the thrift store a couple days ago and i'm actually really excited to try out this trend let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see a tutorial maybe on all the different ways to tie a scarf top because I think that could be really fun even if it's a shorter video or I put it on TikTok or put it on Instagram let me know down in the comments below where you would like to see that and if you would like to see it because I'm really excited to style this scarf in particular okay last trend in the maximum midriff category we have low rise jeans we I am clinging to my high-waisted jeans and you cannot take them from me. But I will say, I did put on a pair of low-rise pants, not jeans, um, and I didn't hate it. Because I do, I do a lot of modeling of my products um, and so I was forced to model some low-rise pants. And I have to admit that I didn't hate it, so. But that's on me, that's a me problem, you know? you you cling to those high-waisted pants as long as you want because I will also be doing the same, but I may give low rise a chance. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, next on the list is super sheer. I kind of already talked about this with wearing bras as tops, but we are seeing a ton of just see-through tops see-through bottoms, see-through dresses. A lot of people are just wearing little sets, little like hot pants shorts and um, a cute bralette and just wearing a sheer dress over it, which I'm here for. Show as much skin as you want, live your life. It is hot person summer. We're here for it. This trend can be worn in tons of ways. You don't have to go that extreme where you're basically walking around in your underwear and you have like a sheer dress on top. You can wear a sheer jacket. I've seen these really awesome outfits where people have taken like those sheer chiffon. Those types of jackets were really popular in 80s evening wear, like over evening dresses, and they were fully sheer. And I've seen people put those over just like a t-shirt and slash jeans just to kind of like grunge it up a little bit make it a little more casual so there is a way to participate in this trend even if you don't want to show off your body speaking of sheer we have netted knits now all knits are on trend right now this is the spring and summer of knits i have seen a ton of knitted tank tops knitted mini skirts little tiny knitted cardigans. Knitting is definitely in, but one thing I do want to touch on is the net knitting. Now this was very popular in the late 80s, the 90s, um, and even made a comeback in the early 2000s. This is self-explanatory. It looks like a net. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> Which leads me to crochet. Crochet is another huge, huge trend. I will say with crochet, do not buy crocheted items from big box stores. Find them secondhand. Find a shop on Etsy that hand makes them because, little fun fact, crochet cannot be done by a machine. Crochet has to be done by hand. So if you buy it from a big box store, it was made by someone who's not being paid well enough to do that much crochet. You know what I mean? So let's just refrain from doing that. Shop small, uh, shop secondhand. That's what this channel is all about anyway. So support your local thrift shops, your local consignment stores, your local Etsy sellers, Depop sellers. Do that. Vintage crochet, 
my favorite, my favorite. And there's an abundance of it at the thrift store. So keep an eye out for that. I do also want to say that buying knits from a big box store, fine. I mean, let's try to stay away from big box stores. There's plenty of options of secondhand, but if you're going to buy these trends from a big box store, here's the difference between crochet and knit. Knit can be done by a machine, crochet cannot. So knit, yes, crochet, Secondhand, do it secondhand. All right, I'll get off my soapbox and let's move on to denim trends. So first on the list, we have crafty or embellished denim, a lot of hand painted denim, a lot of bleach art denim. I'm loving this trend, just getting creative with denim because I think we've gotten a little bored with just regular denim, you know what I mean? Denim is a classic and it will never not be on trend, but I'm kind of liking this new funky art artistic approach, kind of DIY approach to denim. So again, this is one of those that you can easily DIY. There's tons and tons of inspiration on Pinterest for this. You can use any type of medium. You can use bleach. You can use paint. You can bedazzle some jeans if you want to. The possibilities are endless. You can do the cutouts. That's pretty easy. You know, just let your creativity fly. It's time to get crafty. You know, it's so fun. And there are tons of pieces that you can find at the thrift store that are maybe have stains on them or are damaged in some way that you can upcycle and give a new life by doing this DIY and participating in this trend. So I think that is a win-win for everyone. Next on the list, we have dark denim. Now, light wash denim has been in the spotlight for years and years and years, but dark denim is making a very big comeback. Dark denim was huge in the early 2000s. And so of course it's coming back now. We're talking dark denim jackets, dark denim skirts, dark denim jeans. I kind of love the contrast, especially in this season. We have all these bright colors, all these pastel colors, and then we have a dark denim, which is kind of awesome. I'm here for it. And speaking of skirts, denim skirts are making a big comeback. And I'm not just talking mini skirts. I'm talking midi skirts and maxi skirts. So keep an eye out for those denim pieces. Now, what I do want to say about this trend is it's done in a more stylish kind of way and not a frumpy kind of way, if that makes sense. So keep an eye out for those structured, maybe button front. I've seen a lot of button front denim midi skirts and maxi skirts. Keep an eye out for those more stylized denim skirt pieces. And that leads me to maxi length, maxi length dresses, maxi maxi length skirts. Maxi is making a very big return. We've had a lot of time with the midi skirt and the midi skirt is still popular, but a lot of people are switching for maxi skirts. So keep an eye out for those. We kind of have a juxtaposition there with the super micro mini skirt and the maxi skirt, which again, screams early 2000s. Everything was one extreme or the other. Another skirt trend I want to talk about is pleated skirts, but these pleated skirts have a distressed hem. So the classic pleated skirt is being traded in for a more grungy approach, which we'll talk about in just a second. But this is a very easy DIY, again, that you can do on any pleated skirt. All you have to do is cut a straight line on the hem and just leave it. Throw it in the washing machine and it will distress that hem. And there you go, you got yourself a trend. So like I was saying, we're taking a classic piece and making it a little more grungy. And that's because of a new aesthetic that has come onto the scene and that is grungy academia. So academia has been a huge aesthetic for the past couple of years. We had light, dark, romantic academia, which I've talked about in videos before, but now we're seeing a more grungy kind of laid back academia. We're putting some more grungy pieces, putting some more casual pieces with those classic academia pieces. How many times can I say pieces? <laughs> All right, moving on, we have the cropped cardigan. I kind of talked about this in my fall and winter trends video, and you guys informed me it is called a shrug. <laughs> I could not think of what the name of it was. I could see it clear as day. I could see my mom putting me in it every day for first and second grade, but I couldn't remember what it was called. Shrugs are coming back. 
early 2000s, duh. Uh, but cropped cardigans are also coming back. And this is another one that's easily done. As long as it's not like a knit cardigan, um, you can easily crop a cardigan, just cut a straight line, not that hard. So basically the smaller the cardigan, the better. Speaking of outerwear, we also have vests. Now sweater vests have been a trend for the past couple years and they were really big in winter and they are not going anywhere for spring or summer. They are just turning into tank tops. We're no longer layering the vests. We're also seeing a lot of just vests in general, not only just sweater vests, we're seeing like regular open vests. And this has a lot to do with like 90s grunge fashion, 90s Western fashion, and also that early 2000s fashion. Next up, we have sportswear. Now we've seen a huge trend of loungewear in the past couple years due to the pandemic and a lot of people staying home. We wanted to be comfy so loungewear was hugely on the radar in the fashion world. Now it's taking a little bit more of a sporty approach so keep picking up those loungewear pieces but also keep an eye out for the more sporty pieces like shown in this photo. Next up we have extreme layering. Now this is random. It's all over the place. It is anything goes, no holds bar put on whatever you want to put on. And I kind of already talked about this with the pattern mixing or the color clashing where you just, it really puts you out of your comfort zone and you create an outfit using pieces that you never thought you would put together. Here are some great examples, basically just rethinking your closet. I know I'm not the only one who's woken up in the morning and been like, I have absolutely nothing to wear, but I have so many clothes. So now I found myself doing this extreme layering and just putting on the most random pieces and somehow they work together. Don't know how. It just, it works. If you saw my last video, which was my styling video, that first dress, the little like house coat dress, so many comments saying they didn't know how I was gonna pull that off. They weren't sure about that jacket going with it or the hat, just everything. And it ended up being one of the best looks I put together that day. So get out of your comfort zone, put on all the pieces. You know what, be like Joey from Friends and just put all of Chandler's clothes on. You can always take them off if you don't like them. Just put them on, see what happens. You know, go in your closet, do this, pick out random pieces and just put them on your body. See what happens, could be fun. That could be a fun video. That could be a fun video where I blindfold myself and just pick random pieces from my closet and I have to make an outfit out of them. Write that down, write that down. All right, so next up, of course, for spring and summer, we have beach wear and vacation wear. This is kind of self-explanatory, happens every year. It's one of those classics. Next on the list, we have a odd take on fringe. So fringe has been a trend for as long as I can remember, fringe always comes back, usually around spring and summer. It started to come back in fall and winter, and now it's coming back this year, but in a different way. So they're calling this car wash fringe, and this is like a thicker fringe, like the little things that wash your car which I'm here for, I'm, I'm here for it. This is also another one of those things that's pretty easy to DIY. If you like found a skirt with the right material, you could easily cut like wider strips in the bottom and make um, a skirt like this. I think with a lot of these trends, we're just getting bored with the same old same old and we're kind of mixing it up a little bit. Next on the list, we have white dresses. White dresses are all the rage right now. I'm seeing them a lot in bohemian style and prairie style and even some like Y2K futuristic style. I know white is a little bit harder to come by at the thrift store, not stained. So if you see a piece that is in great condition, definitely pick it up because you just scored gold. And that leads us to spring suiting. So little suit sets in bright colors. I showed you guys in my styling video last week the bright pink 70s pantsuit. You guys loved it. I am keeping it. I have to, it's so good. I can't let it go. Definitely keep an eye out for lighter weight because obviously 
you want to be comfortable in the spring and summer. You don't want to wear a wool suit in the spring or summer, but definitely keep an eye out for those spring colors in suiting. Next on the list, we have draped dresses. Now, again, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's just where the fabric, instead of being fitted, is just more draped in layers. They were a big trend in the early 2000s, so they're pretty easy to find at the thrift store. Maybe think about styling them with a fun chain belt that could jazz it up a little bit. And last on our list is hyper feminine. Now we have seen a huge, I hate calling it a trend, but we've seen an uptick, let's just say that, in androgynous pieces, unisex pieces, mixing menswear and women's wear and just making our own style with that, it's making this beautiful androgynous style. And that is still happening right now. It's happening. <laughs> And we're definitely keeping an eye out for those pieces. But now we're seeing a huge uprise this season in hyper feminine pieces. So these big tool dresses, these super girly chic pieces, which I absolutely love. We're seeing a lot of pink. We're seeing a lot of purple just seeing a ton of hyper femininity. I think a really cool way to wear this trend is to pair something super hyper feminine with more androgynous pieces and just having that one piece that is the focal piece being hyper feminine and then the rest kind of being an androgynous kind of unisex look to it or even putting menswear with hyper feminine pieces is a really good look. It creates a really cool juxtaposition and I will definitely be at playing with this trend in my own wardrobe. Woo, that was a lot of trends, but we cannot lose steam yet because we're not done. Let's move on to shoes. I'm gonna go through these kind of quick. I am gonna be putting pictures on the screen, but most of these are just kind of self-explanatory. I don't really need to explain anything. Um, first up, we have chunky sandals. Then we have platforms. Platforms can be in sandals or in heels or boots, all the platforms. Then we have clogs. Clogs, yep. Uh, like I was saying, 90s did the 70s, so 70s trends are also on trend now. Does that make sense? It all trickles down to some department bin where you no doubt fished it out. Of Anyways, I went and double wears Prada there for a second, but Clogs are definitely on trend. They were big in the early 2000s as well. And also I'm seeing a lot of Birkenstocks and I'm not talking about the sandal kind. I'm talking about these kind that we didn't wear socks with and the smell will never leave my sensory memory. So um, if you find some that are in good shape, pick them up. Don't be picking up no stinky ones unless I mean, that's your business, that's your business, but Birkenstocks. Next on the list, we have structural artistic heels. So these are just funky heels that have just an odd out of the ordinary heel. It can be a range of things. Uh, this may be hard to find at the thrift store, but if you do come across them, definitely pick them up because they are very hot right now. Novelty heels, definitely a huge thing right now. Next on the list, we have Mary Janes. Mary Janes, again, were very popular in the early 2000s. I had many a pair and now they have made a return. Speaking of returns, we have wedges, but think a more like skinny structured wedge like we saw in the early 2000s with like the strappy wedge heel sandal whatever you want to call it. It's the more skinny type of wedge, the ones that our ankles hated us for. Those types of wedges, not the thicker, more like 2010s wedge, but the early 2000s wedge. Next up, we have cowboy boots. Now I talked about this in fall and winter and it is not going anywhere. Western wear is very popular right now and Cowboy boots have reached a new level of glam that I wasn't expecting, but I am 1000% here for. I have bought so many cowboy boots in the past few months and I'm just living for them. I'm living for a dramatic, over-the-top, show-stopping cowboy boot. Mm. Keep an eye out for them. They're hard to come by at the thrift store, but when you find a pair, you better cling to them for dear life because... 
you have struck gold, my friend. All right, let's talk about another early 2000s classic, which is the jelly shoe. Now, when I'm saying jelly, I I know we're all having flashbacks of the blisters. There's so many blisters, but what I'm really talking about with jelly shoes is more of like it's more of like a foam jelly now. They found a way in the 2020s to make it comfortable and actually it is very comfortable and I have not gotten one blister so let me show you what I'm talking about. So these are something that I looked in the thrift store forever couldn't find them so I bit the bullet and bought them at Target but these are the little like Birkenstock style sandals and they're like a rubbery like foam texture they're so comfortable and no blisters no blisters i was so worried about getting blisters because like i said i am a survivor of the early 2000s and my feet are ruined but these so comfortable so keep an eye out it's hard to really like describe it's just like a foamy they're like croc material that's what i'm trying to say but like even cushier and like foamier than crocs to me crocs also rub a little bit so yeah, keep an eye out for those. And last but not least on our shoe trends list, we have the princess pump or the hyper feminine heel. So this is like pointed, pointed toe, the little ankle strap, the dainty heel, the jewels on them, like the jewel buckle on the top, just super hyper feminine. What would princess Kate wear? Think of that, the princess pump. I think that's a perfect name for it. <laughs> Okay, so we have two categories left. We have bags and we have accessories. Let's start with bags. First up in bags, we have the micro bag. I kind of already touched on this. Mini is applying to pretty much everything now. This has been around for about a year and will not be going anywhere. So definitely keep picking up those little mini shoulder bags. And of course, we couldn't have one extreme without the other. <laughs> Next on the list is bulky, oversized, slouchy bags. They're making a huge comeback. Again, huge early 2000s trend where we had micro bag and then also the big Mary Poppins bag. Again, with the extremes. Next on the list, we have macrame or woven bags. Now we tend to see a lot of like straw woven bags in the spring and summer. Those are always classic, but we are seeing a lot of macrame bags, crochet bags as well. And again, get those crochet items secondhand if you can. Next on the list is brightly colored bags. We obviously are seeing a ton of color come back into our wardrobes and it's no different for bags. We're particularly seeing a lot of bright green, pink, and also purple bags. Any brightly colored bag is on trend, but those are the three most popular colors for bags. And yellow. Yellow is another really big trend as well. Next, we have vintage bags or vintage style bags. I am really excited about this trend. Obviously, I love vintage bags. It's hard to find them in good condition, but when I do, I get so excited because I love a good vintage bag, even vintage style bags. So if you see a more modern brand, but it has that vintage kind of feel to it, pick it up because those are on trend. Next up, we have the Crescent Moon bag. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just shaped like a crescent moon. These were also really popular in the early 2000s. Dior has had a lot of these crescent moon bags throughout the years, and they also fall into the category of the mini shoulder bag. Next up, we have heavy metal hardware. Now these are big chunky chain straps, big chunky hardware on the outside of the bag, anything with big oversized chunky hardware on it, pick it up. Another couple of shapes that we're seeing in bags is the cylinder and the bucket bag. Love this. Again, early 2000s. Uh, the bucket bag is back. It basically looks like a makeup bag. I'm not going to lie to you. We were straight up carrying around makeup bags when we were kids and we were unashamed. And we're not ashamed now apparently because we're bringing it back. So keep an eye out for those bucket and cylinder bags. And last but certainly not least, we have tiny and layered. Now I've been seeing a lot of this in street style where people are taking these little tiny like coins 
sewing purses and they're layering them almost like necklaces but also like layering them as little crossbodies. I saw a lot of it on the runway and then I so started to see it a lot in street style as well. So, so keep an eye out for those little tiny like coin purse bags with the really long chain. I think those are just classic and elegant anyways, but I love this idea of layering multiples of them. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, and finally, our last category, and that is accessories. First on the list, we have chain belts. I kind of talked about this with like the draped dresses, kind of pairing it with a chain belt. I am loving chain belts recently. It just adds some texture, it adds some shape, it actually adds a really sexy element to pretty much any outfit. I love a good like flowy top with the chain belt and the chain just like falls down your hip. There's something about it. I just love it so, so, so much. Definitely here for this trend. I picked up a few chain belts actually on my last thrift trip. Next on the list is interesting hats. You guys know I'm definitely here for this trend. I love a good hat to me. I'm at the point in my life where an outfit is not complete without a hat. I picked up this cute little, I wanna call it a bucket hat, but also it's kind of like a bowler style hat. Picked this up a couple weeks ago at the thrift store and I have been living in it. I love it so much. It is so flattering to this new mullet I got going on. And obviously it puts my funky earrings that I always have going on on display. I'm just loving it so much. So get creative with the hats. There are tons of really cool vintage hats at the thrift store. Obviously always make sure that you disinfect them and clean them. But yeah, there are many a hat to be found. So go out there and find you some really funky hats. Speaking of headwear, we have head scarves. So again, that's why I love these types of scarves because they're big enough where they're versatile. You can wear them as a scarf. You can wear it as a top. You can tie this around your head, wear it as a head scarf. I have so many of these like silk vintage scarves or silky polyester scarves in my wardrobe because they are so versatile. You can even tie this on your handbag, but the main thing we're seeing is obviously them as tops and then worn as headscarves. Next up, we have the wide waist belt. This is definitely early 2000s. I remember having those big chunky belts. We wore those chunky belts with everything. We're not going that extreme. We're doing more of like a corset situation where it's like a lace up in the front, um, very like fashion forward, not like the uh, pleather buckle with the elastic waist. I'm not talking about that, but I am talking about a thicker, more elegant, but thicker belt, if that makes sense. <laughs> And of course, the next trend is green. I talked about this a little bit before, but we we're seeing green everywhere. And that is also in accessories as well. So pick up all the green pieces. I'm loving it so much. So let's move on to jewelry. We have double chain necklaces, especially like thicker gold chain. This is kind of reminiscent of the 80s, but the double chain layered necklaces. We're also seeing a lot of pearl jewelry and also bobble rings. So a bobble ring, if you grew up in the early 2000s, we all had them. It was those big chunky plastic rings. We had them in all types of colors, all types of patterns. They were everywhere and they have made a comeback. And honestly, this is like the low rise jeans. Like I hate to admit it, I really do. But I kind of want one just for old time's sake, just for old time's sake. They're making them really cute now. They're making them very cute now. So I may have to dip my toe in this one. And last but certainly not least on our accessories list, we have novelty jewelry. You guys see me wear it all the time in my videos. And I actually make most of the earrings that I wear in my videos. Of course, the one time I need to talk about novelty jewelry, I don't have any on. <laughs> also peep this cute little strawberry dish that I found. It's definitely for like sugar and it had like a spoon in it, but I keep all my little earrings in here and I just love it. So novelty earrings. Let's start with one that's super popular that I've seen a ton of. Um, and these are these little mushroom earrings. 
super cute. You've probably seen a lot of like gummy bear earrings. I've got these little mushroom earrings. These are little post earrings that I am working on. So cute, love, love, love. And this is the newest to my shop. Got these cute little smiley face rainbow flower earrings. So things like that, I will also be putting examples on the screen. It's not only earrings, it's bracelets, it's like charm necklaces, things like that. So definitely keep an eye out for those cutesy kind of like novelty, unexpected pieces of jewelry. Alrighty, so that does it for today's video. We made it through all of the spring and summer 2022 trends. That was a long one. It's I feel like it's always a long one. These videos are always just so much information in one video and I'm always exhausted afterwards, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite trend is, which ones you're excited to participate in. If there were any trends that I missed, feel free to let me know down in the comments below so we can all learn from you as well. If you like this video, please be sure and give it a thumbs up on your way out. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe subscribe button and join our family. We would love to have you. Also be sure and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!